Hello my friends, this is the Retro Guy and today I'm going to talk a little bit about this guy here that uh, this is a new project that I'm going to start working on beginning tomorrow. So this here is a um, Amstrad S a CTM 640 RGB monitor. Uh, I bought this at eBay for £10. Very, very cheap. Uh, of course, I was assuming it was broken or something like that, but uh, I tested it and apparently it is working. I couldn't actually connect anything to it because I didn't have the proper cable for it. But um, I just ordered a uh, SCART uh, converter that is going to fit exactly the output of this guy here and I will be able to actually test it. But it seems to work. Uh, when I powered it on, I heard uh, the high voltage circuit actually kicking in. I also saw some static on the tube and also, uh, you know, messing around with the brightness, I could see some uh, oscillation in place, which kind of is a good sign. What I detected is that the brightness knob, which is that guy there where my finger is, you see? So there is a pot there and uh, it seems to be a little ditchy, if uh, that's the right term. So basically when I touch it uh, with the monitor on, I see basically the image uh, going on and off very quickly and uh, with high brightness, which tells me that the pot needs some cleaning and eventually even like changing it. Uh, I will take care of that as soon as I start cleaning this. As you can see, it's a big mess. This is a mid 80s sort of monitor. So very old and um, probably never been serviced. So that's why it's that mess. Uh, overall, it looks good. Uh, all the components look fine and uh, I don't see any major issues with it. So yeah, it's just a matter of cleaning it up and uh, making sure that that potentiometer for the brightness here is properly cleaned and uh, then I can test it again, make sure that it's no longer flickering and it's working as expected. And uh, of course, uh, using the right cable, the proper cable to connect uh, all sorts of computers to this. So my intention is actually to use this on my uh, Atari ST. So that would be great. Uh, another option is also connecting this to an MSX that I have. Um, that would be also very nice. So uh, I have to wait for the cable to come and then uh, use it for the testing. So um, what can I tell you more about this? Uh, this came with the power cable cut, as you can see here. So I actually uh, removed the so I removed the shield of the cable just to connect it to the to the outlet and just to see whether or not it could work. Um, yeah, it, uh, I saw that it powered on, so that's a good thing. So what I'm going to do actually is uh, remove this built-in power cord. So you see that those uh, old TVs and monitors, they did have this um, thing with the power cord built into to the whole uh, frame and everything else. So what I'm going to do is just cut the cable and uh, add one of those uh, connectors, outlet connectors uh, on the case itself. So it should be easy enough to to do that. I have done this for other equipments that I have. Uh, it, worked, it worked beautifully, so I don't think it's going to be an issue and it's going to make this much, much better. Um, those that you see here are some cables that uh, we have. So here is the actual uh, RGB cable. It's proprietary from Amstrad. Uh, it's very easy to find a pinout, so not too hard to actually manufacture a cable that would fit uh, any other uh, brand of computer. But uh, the thing is, since this is proprietary and the cable is actually, you know, as you can see, built into the, the case, uh, it's actually easier to get uh, some sort of like an adapter or converter. And there is one that is already made and uh, it's being sold. That is, it costs like eight pounds, which is a SCART converter for this, exactly this uh, monitor here. So just plugging this into that converter, the other end is going to be a SCART uh, plug. And then you can basically use that as a breakout cable to connect pretty much anything that you want on the other end. So that's so what I'm going for. And this here, this is a 12 volt 
plug. So this was designed to connect the Amstrad computers, of course. So there is this uh, 12 volt cable here. I tested it. It is uh, basically delivering the expected uh, power current. So it should be okay. I'm not gonna use it though. At least uh, not, uh, not for now. So yeah, that's pretty much it. As you can see here, it is an Amstrad uh, motherboard or the analog board of this is Amstrad. Even though this was, uh, as far as I, I know, based on the research that I've made, this was made by Schneider. So which was like a fairly uh, decent electronics manufacturer back in the days. So yeah, that looks okay. Uh, I really need to go through, you know, the soldering and make sure that uh, there are no cracks or anything like that. Again, like looking at it, kind of looks uh, decent I don't see any major issues or you know burnt capacitors or anything like it but um, of course I will have to take some time and go over it just to make sure everything is really okay so yeah it looks like a bit of dry soldering here see and uh, yeah eventually some other points as well which is expected for a monitor there with this age unfortunately I couldn't find any tag with the right date of this particular monitor which will be great actually to see um, I know it's mid 80s but uh, it would be nice to have the exact date where this was actually built so we have this here maybe using the serial number of the tube we might be able to figure this out I don't know but um, normally there are some markings or a tag or something that uh, you can use to identify. And uh, yeah, I'm not finding this here. So yeah, so this is for the flyback transformer. Yeah, it's the amount of dust. You see that is in this guy is really amazing. Like, look at that. So it really requires a lot of cleaning here so yeah again this this is expected isn't it like uh, it's a very old sort of thing so yeah I'm going to remove this board here uh, it should be easy enough to do so and then I'm going to do like a thorough cleaning on this guy and uh, and then after that I will I think by then I will have the the cable already you know at home here so i can basically go and test that with um some computers that i have so here is another tag but it also doesn't give me any information about the date at least not visually so this uh this is the serial number for this particular monitor so it might you know help identify the age of it and again, no markings on the motherboard or anything like that. And no tags either. So this is really filthy. So I should be wearing gloves actually to touch it because it's very nasty. And that's it guys. So um, if you look for it on the YouTube, uh, this monitor working, you will realize that um, it actually provides a, a very good image, a uh, very good quality image. Um, so it is cheap it's not so hard to find I saw another one uh, on sale at eBay at the same price 10 pounds so uh, yeah again it could be not working but uh, again for 10 pounds you know uh, it, it is really worth uh, the risk of uh, receiving a non-functional uh, monitor so what can you lose 10 pounds so why not it's becoming more and more difficult to find those guys. Uh, good quality RGB monitors are not really easy to find nowadays. And, uh, well, I think even if I wasn't uh, planning to use it, I would still buy it just, you know, to to have it. And, uh, and in the future, if I want to either sell it or if I wanted to use uh, for another project, I will have one. So another tag here, but again, no date or anything like that. Yeah, that's it. That's what I wanted to show you guys. So again, this is a project that I will start uh, tomorrow, not today. So I still have to disassemble the whole thing and then uh, make sure it's clean 
and make sure that the potentiometer for the brightness here is uh, properly cleaned. So I'm going to use this uh, deoxid uh, fader F5. So this is basically a, a, a contact cleaner that I use for uh, faders on my uh, music keyboards that I have and uh, it worked really well. So it's basically recommended for potentiometers uh, of all sorts. Uh, so normally it works really well and I'm going to be using this one here to try to give some new light to that pot that you see there. If I can't find it, uh, if I can't fix it, then uh, I will have to replace it. The problem is uh, to get the right uh, readings, you know, so that I can actually order the right replacement. It's not going to be that easy. I will have to do a little research on that. It should not, should not be impossible either. But uh, either way, it should be an easy fix if that's the only problem. Uh, the other thing that I read on the internet is that there is a circuit and I see somewhere. I don't think I can actually find it uh, without disassemble the whole thing. But uh, there is a piece of circuitry inside of this that is very known to fail. And um, I just ordered a couple of those. It's I think then it's a seven eight hundred something. Uh, they're the the, the tag on that particular IC so I ordered a couple of those uh, each one like costs uh, two pounds each so I just uh, you know thought with myself why not just order it even if I don't need it at least I will have it in case you know something goes wrong or so I don't have to order that afterwards and keep waiting for that to come so from what I read those are the most common issues so the potentiometer by by itself it's a well-known problem and uh, this particular IC that I can't show you because I can't find it. I don't have a clue where it is. So, yeah, and uh, I basically have both covered for when the project starts. And that's it, guys. I'm not going to touch too much of this because, uh, you know, it's very, very dusty. And I don't want this to contaminate my environment here. So this is the case, the back of the case. And as you can see, it's equally dusty. So again, looking for, okay. So here we have the ABS markings that could indicate when this was built. So what we have here is, hmm, you have to figure out how to read that. But uh, yeah, that would be an indication of uh, the fabrication date of this guy here and in here you have basically the back tag which again doesn't have any date or anything like that so I would try to figure that out somehow uh, so that's it that's uh, that's basically it so thank you for watching and uh, join me uh, beginning tomorrow when I will start disassemble this whole thing and uh, trying to give this guy a new life. By the way, the tube is in perfect condition, no scratches or anything like that. That is really good, good news. So yeah, that's it guys. So we finished the cleanup and uh, this is basically the final stage uh, before assembly, reassembly. So this is uh, the power plug that I added, as you can see. So to get rid of that uh, built-in cable, looks much nicer now, as you can see. Uh, this is the tube, perfectly clean now, looking really good. I cleaned, of course, the case internally as well. I don't use water to clean the, you know, uh, old CRTs because high voltage with water, not a good idea. So basically I, I really removed the dust by hand. And this is the board. As you can see here, it is unrecognizable really like uh, it's very clean now there you go so perfectly clean and ready to go so this is the chip here that i mentioned before this one la 7800 so this is the one that from what i read is very uh prone to fail i have already received the two that i bought just in case so I'm going to reassemble and test it 
and uh, in all going well of course I'm not going to replace that chip but uh, if something goes bad then I know what to do uh, I have already degreased and relub the, the potentiometer here for the brightness so it's very clean now so hopefully that um, crackling thing is gone by now so I'm going to reassemble everything now give it a shot and see how it goes okay my friends so this is the test so I have uh, so this is the monitor the clean one after I done all the work so it's already connected to the power and it's connected to this MSX computer here a Canon v V20 model so this is the French model that has the RGB port on the back uh, the Japanese models of those they don't have the RGB port they only have a composite port so I bought actually this one came with a SCART RGB um, breakout cable and I had to buy the SCART cable to connect to the Amstrad CTM640 monitor so this is done already unfortunately I will not have sound here because uh, this monitor doesn't have speakers and I didn't bother to connect external speakers for this experiment here so I'm going to show you this working with um, this uh, Maper Megaram car cartridge that I have for the MSX, which basically has an SD card on it with a lot of games and stuff. So it's very good for us to test it. And you guys get to see this working. So I'm going to uh, put the cartridge here. Hmm. Okay, now it's in place. I'm going to turn on the monitor. Yeah, I can see static here, so it's working. As you can see, the monitor, when uh, it powers up without any video signal uh, being sent to it, it doesn't do anything pretty much, like it just stays like that, uh, pretty blank. But if I turn on the MSX, then the magic works. As you can see, the quality of the image is very decent. Uh, it's not like, for example, having a Sony PVM uh, RGB monitor. It's not the same quality, of course, but uh, the quality is really good. It's much, much better than uh, composite options and very stable and very crispy, actually. Uh, I would say that this really is very similar to the Commodore, um, the Commodore 1084 uh, lineup monitors. So... I don't know if in the picture the quality of the monitor is going to make um, you know like uh, make up for the actual quality that I can see here because of the flickering and everything else that I cannot get rid of uh, without uh, you know with the, the camera that I have unfortunately I'm not sure about the focus as well whether or not the focus is actually capturing this here I'm going to do a close-up later on so you can actually see it so let's uh, let's test the game here shall we so I'm going to use here um, yeah, so CD, SR, not SF, and then I'm going to run a software called Sofaren, Sofaren that uh, is used to basically execute games on this uh, particular cartridge here. So, and then we can run, for example, like, uh, let's run Parodius, which is a very famous MSX Konami game. And with a lot of graphics and stuff, so it's very easy to visualize how this goes. Okay, it's loading now. Again, unfortunately, we don't have uh, sound here. So that's really a shame, but uh, it's very easy to see the quality and how things go. Right, so again, it's a very crisp image that I have here. Very, very good quality image. And... Uh, I'm going to let uh, you know the, the game intro basically go through. So it has a lot of graphics and it's uh, very good for us to see uh, the quality. Again, forget me, uh, forgive me about the, the lack of sound. It's just that I don't have any uh, speakers to connect to this. Actually, I do have. It's just I didn't bother to you know like uh, connecting them and uh, just for the sound. Because the idea is really to show you the monitor and uh, the monitor is working just great. So no adaptations were needed for the monitor to work with the MSX, except for having the breakout cable, the SCART breakout cable, and it works out of the box. So this uh, plug here is a 5-volt plug that uh, this monitor has. 
I have no use for it when using with an MSX, but uh, this cable was designed to connect the um, Amstrad line of uh, computers on that era, basically. So you didn't have to basically plug them using an, an external uh, power supply or anything like that. If you do have computers that use uh, five volt input with this plug here, then you can also benefit from it by connecting the computer directly to that line. It's working just fine, by the way. So let me start again here. So you can see it actually going. So you can choose your character. And there you go. It's a shooting up sort of game. So you just have to you know, shoot pretty much everything that uh, is flying on the screen and then collect the bonuses and stuff like that. So if you guys know Gradius or Nemesis, this is pretty much the same thing, with the exception that it uses different characters and uh, it's more fun to play, really. Like, it has a lot of, uh, uh, you know, anecdotes and uh, it plays a lot of... Uh, uh, with uh, the characters that Konami has basically created in the past. And... Uh, yeah, so I got the laser here, and uh, yeah, as you can see, like uh, it's very playable, very, very nice quality image that you get here. And I'm pretty sure I can actually get this even better if I adjust the monitor a little bit. Uh, by the way, the brightness knob that I cleaned up, uh, it's perfect now. It's very responsive, and this is actually the lowest brightest option that I have for this particular signal that is outputting from this MSX here. Uh, I've heard that... Uh, Depending on the computer you're actually hooking up to this monitor, the brightness signal might be way too high and uh, there are some adjustments that I can actually do here if that is the case. In my case, just the brightness knob did the trick, so I didn't have to bother. I'm actually going to, I'm waiting for um, an Atari ST breakout cable that should arrive next week so I can try that with my Atari ST as well and then compare the image quality between those two. Uh, I can say that for the MSX is amazing, really. Like the image quality is really great and uh, it's working just fine. All the colors are there and uh, no wash up colors or anything like this. Uh, the contrast is uh, really great for this monitor as well. As I said, I would compare this with uh, the Commodore uh, 1084 line of monitors. It's, uh, it's really good, it works really well and I'm pretty sure it will be great in a lot of other computers as well, like the Amiga, and other RGB-based uh, old computers. It won't work with modern computers at all, uh, from what I, I read, because this uh, monitor basically is expecting a 15 kilohertz, um, um, a 15 kilohertz uh, signal, right? So uh, newer computers will not generate that, so you don't have it. So let's try another game, shall we? So let's uh, reset that and let's load SOPA run again and let's put this to work with another game. Let's say, um, well, let's see what we have here. So CD and start SOPA run and let's see what we have here. So. I have, uh, for example, there's a number of games here, and those are actually SCC-based games. So let's go on to the uh, Mega ROM games here. So let's actually go to MSX1 games. Let's see what we have in there. Now that's not what I wanted. So let's go to Mega ROM games and then see what we have inside. So that's plenty of games for us to test here. So the Konami games for sure are the most interesting ones, but there are others. So let's see the original Nemesis here or not. Yeah, Nightmare, this is a good one. Also a Konami game that is uh, a classic one, really nice, very enjoyable to play. Well, it should be Konami, uh, or I think this is actually another game. This is not Nightmare. So it might be, yeah, this is uh, some other game. So let's see what this game is all about.
Okay, so yeah, that doesn't look too nice. It's actually similar to the Konami's one, but uh, yeah, it's not really as nice as Konami's like that. But again, like this is this is the monitor. It's working just fine. Very brightful, very colorful. Uh, contrast weights are great. As you can see here, like uh, the portion of the screen that is not being used is actually black, so you don't see any any signs of uh, you know uh, uh, luminosity going on here. So the portion of the screen that is not being used is totally dark, which uh, to me like indicates the good quality of uh, a CRT monitor. So yeah, it's it's really great. It's a great monitor to to use. I have my eyes on another one now that is uh, also on sale at eBay and I will see if I can uh, get my hands on that and eventually refurbish like I did with this one here. Uh, this one, I, my refurbishment really was just mainly like cleaning it up and uh, adding the, uh, the power plug in the back. I didn't really like replace any caps or, or chips or anything like that. It was already fully operational, uh, which I think it's fairly common for CRT monitors on the, this era. I have my 1084 as well, which works great without any replacements of uh, caps or anything like that. And uh, the Sony PVM that I have also works just flawlessly. So yeah, normally monitors, uh, I think they have a higher quality in terms of the build and uh, they tend to, to last like for a long, long time if you take well uh, care of them. So this one here, uh, even though it was very, very dirty, as you saw in the previous footage, um, it has been uh, well taken care of. Like uh, the screen has no scratches or anything, which is um, a good sign of, uh, you know, this monitor hasn't been moving around or anything like it. So I think the main thing here is really the screen. So whenever buying a CRT monitor, you have to be lucky enough to have a screen without any dent or marks or scratches or anything like it because if there are scratches on the screen that's pretty much it there is nothing you can do about it there is no magic to get rid of the scratches or anything like that so you have to live with that sometimes the scratch if it is on diagonal for example it is going to hurt your eyes when playing games or stuff like that because the pixels basically got um, caught in those in, in those scratches and uh, it, it doesn't help so yeah i think i was lucky with this one here Again, it's in perfect quality, no marks or anything like it. The screen is in perfect shape. Uh, the, the, the case is also like in very good shape and uh, everything is working. Like even this five volt cable here is, uh, you know, delivering exactly five volts, which really amazes me. That's it guys. So uh, now I have a nice kit here with this black NSX and this black Armstrong monitor and um, so yeah, I'm very happy with it. So this guy here was actually on hold, waiting for a proper monitor basically to arrive so I could hook it up. And now it is here, right? So I can start using this guy here. The only thing that is a bit annoying about this particular MSX here is that uh, because this is the French uh, version of it, it has the Azerty keyboard, which is quite annoying. I really don't like, but um, I have to live with that really like there's really nothing I can do because again the Japanese models of those here are they don't have the RGB output you have to use a composite and I don't like composite uh, the quality is not really that great it will never look as good as uh, what I'm seeing here right now so before I finish this up I'm going to just uh, zoom it up here so you guys get to see the quality of the picture hopefully and uh, and that's pretty much it. Then we are going to end this for today, okay? So bear with me here. I'm going to zoom it up so you guys can actually see the quality. Okay, so uh, so let me try to show you. So this is the so far run startup screen, right? And uh, let me try to zoom this up where, you know, the pink meets the green here. So very difficult, as you can see in terms of the quality, right? You can see like the pixels and you can actually see that there is no color bleeding or anything like that. So it's really nice in that sense. 
So if I go back, it's actually easier to visualize the whole thing, right? So in terms of uh, crispiness, it's very crisp image. So let's try to see some characters here. So letters, right? So it's, uh, again, as you can see, it's very crisp, no color bleed or anything like that. So very nice quality for image. So let's try um, So let's try this one here. I think this is the Konami nightmare. So let's see if it is. Yeah, this is the Konami one. All right? So again, uh, color wise it's really perfect you see like uh, you can really see that this monitor is capturing the right colors and everything and again I didn't adjust anything here it's just out of the box just using the SCART cable that you see here so this is the breakout cable that I'm using so one end is connected to the RGB output of the MSX here the other end is basically connecting to the Amstrad monitor input here and that's pretty much it so amazing quality and uh, very nice to have something like this so the game stopped here I'm just wondering I think it actually yeah I think I have an issue here with the game itself but uh, yeah again that's what I wanted to show you guys right so very nice monitor for you guys to consider at eBay or stuff like that. This is the CTM 640. There is another model that is the 644, if I'm not mistaken, which is essentially the same monitor. The difference is that the 644 has an additional uh, 12 output plug. So it might be useful again if you're connecting to uh, any computer that uh, demands that sort of power. Uh, if not, it doesn't really matter. Like you can uh, just not use the cable and that's pretty much it. By the way, those cables can be removed. Uh, if you open the case, I can actually get rid of this guy here if I want um, without breaking the computer or anything like that. It's just a removable uh, from within. It's very easy to remove. Also, if you want, you can uh, direct this to the back of the monitor uh, instead of being in the front. I think uh, depending on the machine you're going to connect to this, having the plug in the front is very convenient. Like for this MSX, for example, I think it's more convenient to have the plug in the front than coming out of the back. But again, it's, uh, it's really up to you. You can uh, basically tuck this in and uh, open up a plug in the back and uh, you're good to go. Right? Okay, guys, that's what I wanted to show you, and I'm off.